Hi, good morning Living Epistle. My name is Noel Gumapak. I am the keyboardist for the Living Epistle music team. And this morning I just want to talk about one of the seven last words that Jesus spoke while he was on the cross. We're talking about Matthew chapter 27 verse 46. In the English version it says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So I just want to talk about a few points regarding this verse that was basically cried out by God in his uh, time on the cross while he was nailed to the cross. Uh, I just want to point out number one. This was basically of a show of how human Jesus was at that time. If you would look closely at the whole chapter or at the whole uh, crucifixion uh, story, he actually felt excruciating pain. There was hopelessness. There was loneliness. I mean, he was even thirsty at some point during the crucifixion ordeal. And you might be thinking, uh, how can God feel pain? How can be? How can he be hopeless? How can he be lonely? Because, you know, at a given point in time, at a certain point in time of his life, here on earth, he was actually human. Okay? He even felt sad because, you know, even if there were like, two people on the cross with him, you know, the very people that he loved was basically far away from him. So, yeah, that's number one. It's Jesus being human. And uh, you might ask, and this is my second point, you might ask, why did he not save himself from the terrible situation that he was in? Well, basically, at the end of the day, this particular time, the crucifixion, it's not about Jesus. This is basically about us, the people that he loves most. It's basically time for us to be saved and not basically time for the Savior to shine. Everything that he did was basically about saving his people from the terrible uh, consequences of sin. So he took everything from us he took all the sins that we have committed and we're about to commit and he basically took that with him uh, to his death on the cross. Point number three, sin is very much the opposite of God that even Jesus wanted to be rid of it. But to be totally, totally be rid of it, he had to overcome it. I mean, I'm gonna try to give you an analogy of what this is all about. And um, I'll have to warn you that it's going to be a little graphic. Remember the time when you had your kid when he was still small? I mean, I remember the time when Nigel was still uh, barely a month old or maybe two, three months, some, somewhere at those times. And uh, Carol wasn't available at that time. Nigel had to do the number two. So pag sinabing number two, it's going to be a little bit more messy than number one, right? Since nobody was there, I was forced to handle it. I mean, if you think about it, it's really a yucky thing to do, you know, to change the diapers and all of that, especially if it's number two. But then again, if we look at it closely, we need to make sure that on top of everything else, it's my son's health that's on the top of the priority list. Because if I don't change his diapers, something or some things will terribly go wrong. And this is basically the same thing with, uh, with, with Jesus and sin. I mean, he doesn't want to touch it. He doesn't want any part of it. But at the end of the day, you know, he took everything because he wants to save us from the consequences of sin, which is death. So yeah, those are my two cents on why Jesus said, you know, why you have forsaken me, on why... You know, Jesus would have to cry that out because sin was something that's very alien to him. Even if sin was everywhere, sin is not of God. And this is something that God still had to do because he loves us so much. So thank you for your time. God bless you.